on today's episode of Moto Cheese. What's up, boys? I'm back in a mini truck again. So I got one of these 120 watt foldable solar panels by Vated, the GB-SP001. Now I have one of their portable power units. Test it on that. Let's see what this thing will do. It looks pretty compact. Packaged well. I've been using my flexible panel for a while. This will definitely be a nice addition to Moto Cheese's shop. Nice carry bag. It's even got a pouch on the back. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Got some adapters. The user's manual, other known as the manual. Spanish novel. This is good if you don't want to mount something permanent. There's the outputs on it. It's like pass through if you have multiple units. XT60 output, DC, 18 volts output, Type C, and the USB A. 5, 9, and 12 volts on the USB ports. They're mono crystalline solar panels with a 23% efficiency max. Peaks 120 watts. USB A QC 3.0. Type C QC 3.0. Then it has a regular output, 5 amps. XT60 output, 10 amps. And XT30, 10 amp in or out. And on this side, another XT30 in or out. It's a semi sunny day. I have this upside down. I see how this works. So it looks like it has four 30 watt panels to total 120 watts. Nice bag. Wow, look at all the adapters that comes with it. Looks like you could power just about anything. Very nice. This is if you're daisy chaining. It's a XT30 connector. This is for the outlet right there. And this is the XT60 style solar connector with of course the same connector so you can run any of these for charging your portable power supplies and whatnot. So let's get out the Vated 300 watt portable power station. I don't remember what the state of charge is on this. We're at 99 percent so let's wear this thing down. For a good way to drain this down, charge the battery up on my CJ. This Vated 300 watt portable power supply Give links for that down below too, along with the solar panel, of course. These are awesome little units to have. You never know how much you need one until the power goes out. Got a few clouds in and out. Let's try out this USB-C port. Well, it's back and forth because the sun's not out yet. Come on, clouds. Got Hurricane Ian coming up this way too, this week probably. There's the sun. All right. Fast charging. Got a little green light right there that's being used. In standby mode, the indicator light is on for three seconds and off for six. Under working condition, the lamp's always on. I can see there's a, looks like a yellow light there. The overcurrent protection indicator is on for three seconds and off for six. So, see, it says 72% available, fast charger connected. A few moments later. Eh, it's been about a half hour. We're down to 75% battery. That's good enough to see how this charges. Gotta do it while the sun's still shining good. So, trying to figure out where to place the solar panel best to point at the sun. That 
big orange dot in the sky. So the best way I found out, best positioning to see the sun, if you take something like a magic marker, you see that shadow? So I gotta go down even further. Anything with a flat bottom will do, of course. And we'll just wait for the sun to come back out and see if I got the right angle. So the sun's back out. And that is almost perfect. I guess I could drop it a little bit. You can see that's my finger, not the marker or whatever you're going to use. It has a nice flat bottom. But that's pretty close. Pretty close to perfect. And that's how I do it. That's not my middle finger either. <laughs> so closed up in its soft bag. It looks like 23 and a half inches by 18 and a half inches. So opened up. This unit's 64 and just a little over three quarter inches long. 22 inches high. Try to see if I can get a good close-up of these solar panel cells. A little better. Now I'm liking this compact unit. I can keep this in my Jeep. Not that big. 120 watts. Let's see. I think they would have designed that a little bit differently so the plug doesn't block any of those solar cells. Let's see what we got. Plug into the MPPT port. It says we're doing about 58 watts. Almost 60 watts. So I gotta keep moving them solar panels because of the trees. So even on a brick charger, block charger, it's only doing 57, 58 watts. Unfortunately, the smaller vated unit We'll only charge at 60 watts max so we have to go to a bigger unit look how far the shadow is going i'll set it up right here hope no clouds come that's pretty good let's see what this big mama jama does I'll just take this plug and this one that looks like the one so it's nice that it comes with all these adapters because it'll fit pretty much any of the portable power supply units you'll buy so as you can see it's pretty cloudy even so, I'm still getting about well, 13, 18, it's coming up now. It looks like, oh yeah, clouds are finally going away. Let's see what we can get up to. It's trying. That's the problem with solar, boys. But at least you can get a little bit out of a cloudy day. I saw 74, 76, 80, and back behind the clouds. Also notice it has some built-in grommets on all four corners. If you decide to mount it somewhere and strap it down on a roof, hang it on a tree, gives us some options. The sun just doesn't want to come out. Come on, baby. 82. Oh, I feel the sun's warming up now. 92. 95. 100 watts. There we go. 94. Oh, might hit 100 watts again. 95. And this is afternoon sun. This is almost charged back up to 100%. Look how fast that shade's moving. Let's try one more right out in the middle of the grass. I guess that 100 watt is the best we're gonna do. See if the sun shines brighter tomorrow. We'll give it one more shot. 67% battery. This is a different portable power station I figured I'd try it on. Find the proper plug, which is there. Oh, 121 watts, 124. Wow, look at that. 125 watts, nice. Yeah. Sun's going back behind the clouds. Pretty cloudy day today. It's pretty good that that was pumping out more than 120 watts there for a little bit. Ooh, 125, 127, 128. Got a little break in the clouds, and the sun's pumping pretty good right now. Not much of a break in the clouds. I'm impressed. And there it goes again. 
I was happy to at least capture that. Pretty impressive. See if we can get some more full sunlight. <laughs> Might be a while. Nice. Figure I'd pull this in a little bit just in case it rains. It's supposed to have scattered storms today. But it's holding a consistent over 100 watts for the last five minutes. You can also hear the fan of the unit keeping it cool while it charges. And we're up to 70%. I've only had a couple little glimpses of the sun in the last hour. I'm going to put my hand over it and see what it does. Alright, that's just that much of my hand. Dropped it to 90. Pull it back off and see if it goes back up. Yep. So you definitely want to keep your solar panels clean. Like I said, a good sized leaf will drop quite a bit on most of these panels. So since there's a chance of rain, I looked up to see if it's waterproof and it says the product is IPX4 and can prevent small amounts of daily splashing. But please keep the unit away from moisture. Do not submerge the unit in water or operate the unit in the rain. Doing so may cause short circuits, electrical shocks, and fire. So we won't let this stay out if it starts to rain. Pretty easy breakdown to store away. So it is nice and compact for 120 watts. Honestly, I don't think you'd really want anything less than 120 watts. Nice padded case. The only flaw I see is these output connectors have to cover part of the solar cells. I wish they would have made them maybe where everything come off the sides because as you know any little shaded area will drop the efficiency output so I do like it I think I'll keep it in my Jeep or in a van if I go camping a lot more portable than a solid unit and I think four separate 30 watt cells is actually a pretty good idea too because if one cell is partially blocked you have three others working at full output. Some solar cells, you can have a leaf go on it and it'll drop it down almost 50%. So I'll have the link down below and on MotorCheese.com. If you want one, go get it. That's right. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on MotorCheese.com. Thanks for watching.